Today I've brought the cameras along to the fantastic Tolleton Ponds where I'm going to be fishing on the Kingfisher Lake. And typical of lots of commercial fisheries throughout the country now, it's old, it's mature but it's full of carp. And with that come some problems such as deep margins and fish that become really, really hard to catch. So today I'm going to run you through all of my tactics and approaches for tackling them problematic deep margin pegs and hopefully it'll help put a few more fish in your net. important thing when it comes to fishing in a deep margin is choosing to fish in the right spot. Now when it comes to margin fishing you often see people fishing with a rig as close to the bank as they can possibly get and in shallower edges that's really really good. It stops fish getting in behind your rig, means you can hook them better, foul hook less fish and get less liners. What you often find with a deep margin is the bank can be really really undercut which is why it's so deep a lot of the shelves worn away. You can get sort of reeds and grass hanging in, roots from under the bank, and fishing right next to the bank can become really problematic. First of all, the fish can always get in behind your rig no matter how close to the bank you are because they can get under that undercut. Secondly, the bait that you're feeding can hang up in things like roots and grass and bits that are under the water, meaning the carp come and feed off the bottom. And for that reason, if I can, I always look to fish sort of 12 to 18 inches away from the bank. It means I'm fishing where the, it's a bit cleaner, there's not things hanging in, they're not going to come that far into the lake and I can get my bait to the bottom and fish nice and effectively where I'm not going to have the fish wanting to come off the bottom and I'm going to foul up them. One other thing you often find when the edge is deep is the bottom, if you go further out into the lake it might be the same depth but the bottom in the edge is generally much harder so by fishing away from the bank a little bit you're getting away from all that problematic undercut and roots and things hanging in the water but most importantly you'll still be fishing on a hard bottom meaning it's not going to cloud up too much you're not going to get fish burying into the silt and it just makes them a little bit easier to catch One of the most important aspects of margin fishing is making sure you come into the margins at the right time of day. Now obviously you'll always get them red letter days and people have them now and again where you'll be able to catch in the margins from start to finish. But generally the fish will come down the margins when they want to come and that's normally late on in the day. So whether that be the last sort of hour and a half, two hours of your match or right towards the end of your pleasure session, not far before you pack up. But fishing it there at the right time of the day means you're going to maximise the potential of the margins in your peg. So a couple of quick things, the first thing is late in the match, like I said, obviously maybe an hour and a half to go, that's the time to look at maybe starting to feed the margins. Same with your pleasure session, oh that was a lovely positive bite, absolutely buried. And that's what generally happens when you're fishing there at the right time of the day. So as well as that last spell, time to start feeding it late on, the other thing you can do is keep an eye on other anglers on the lake. And what you tend to find is you'll maybe see three, four, five anglers all hook carp in the margins, sort of around a similar time, and that's a good sign. Not the biggest carp in the world, but very welcome. Yeah, so when you see them few anglers all hook one together at the same time, it's obviously a good sign that the fish are happy to come He's a bit lively. The fish are happy to come into the margins and that's going to be the best time to start feeding it. By feeding it at the right time, you're feeding it when the fish are coming in confident, you're not having to feed loads and loads of bait and it means you can catch them much easier. So when it comes to feeding, just how much am I going to look to feed? I'm going to look for them telltale signs either late in the match, maybe fish starting to move about close or possibly other anglers starting to hook them and it makes me think right now is the time the fish are going to come into the edge I need to feed because I'm feeding at the right time of the day I'm not going to feed loads of bait 
and maybe sort of quarter to a third of my big pot full of six mil pellets as my initial starting point. I'll feed that many from a height, maybe two, three foot off the water, make plenty of noise, let the fish know they're there, and then I'll give it maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and it's time to have a look. When I'm gonna go on it and fish it, I've got my little pole mounted pot, like you can see, and I'm gonna try and feed that with my pot under the water, tip my bait out, and not make too much noise. Don't give them carp a reason to come off the bottom where it's obviously a little bit deeper. Oh, just missed a bite then. I'll just have another quick drop in, see if I get one. If not, I'll come back, refeed, and reset my trap. But like I was just saying, don't give them carp any reason to come up off the bottom of the lake. If I sneak that bait in underwater, it gives the carp less chance of looking up. They're going to be looking down towards where my hook bait's positioned. Now, obviously, in an ideal world, you'll just keep doing that and you'll keep catching. But like I said, it's not the best way to draw carp into your peg. The best way to tend, you tend to draw them into your peg is making noise and letting the fish know the bait's coming. But obviously, I don't want to be feeding loads of bait over the top of my rig, making loads of noise and potentially foul-looking fish. So what I'm going to try and do, and something I've had loads of success doing, if I need to feed bait from a height or make noise with my bait to draw some fish in, I'm going to try and feed just how I have with my pot, hook a fish, and then I'll throw some bait in by hand. And I've had a really good spell doing that today, just fishing a top kit to my left-hand side. Every time I hooked one, I threw a handful of pellets in, went back in with my pot, let the fish settle down while I'm playing a fish. Obviously, while I'm playing it, I'm not having problems with liners that, of fish that have come to the noise. I can give them a chance to settle down. Missed another bite, so I'll refeed. The fish settle down over that bait that I've thrown in, and I can go and reset my trap, just like I'm about to do now, and give myself a chance of drawing one round my hook bait again. By feeding while my rig's out of the water, I'm also giving myself a real good chance to just up up my catch rate a little bit because I'm drawing a fish into my peg while my rig's not there. When I drop my bait in, hopefully there'll already be a fish there waiting for me. Where if I go in and just feed with my pot, if that works, great, but quite often you'll be having to wait for another fish to come in before you can catch it. Just missed another bite then. Whereas if I'm feeding my bait, while my rig's out the water, there'll already be a fish there waiting, I can go back in, hopefully it'll tag it straight onto that pot and I'll catch it much, much faster. So a really simple approach, but it lends itself perfectly to these deep margins. When it comes to bait choice for fishing in the margin, something that's really, really popular these days is fishing with baits like dead maggots and ground bait. Now, there's no doubt that they draw loads of fish into your peg and catch lots and lots of fish in the margins, but for these deep edges like I've got today, I don't really think they're a suitable bait. They're too light, they get wafted about your peg, they come up off the bottom, they get stuck in all them bits of debris I spoke about, and it just causes all sorts of problems with miss bites and foul hookers. So when it comes to fishing in a deep margin, personally, I think you want nice, big, heavy baits, particle baits that are gonna sit on the bottom, not be wafted about too much, and you can create a nice little pile of bait to fish over. So there's a few choices. You can use things like hard pellets, you can use corn, you can use hemp, but anything nice and heavy. My personal favorite for these deep edges is nearly always hard pellets. And you've got a few options when it comes to sizes and amounts that you're gonna feed. So my main one that I'm gonna to look to feed is six mil pellets. They're nice and big, they're nice and heavy. They're gonna pin themselves to the bottom and try and keep the fish down there exactly where I wanna catch them. I'm gonna mostly be feeding them through a good sized pot on the end of my pole. 
Maybe I'll big pot some earlier on if I feel like I need to draw the fish in and make a bit of noise. But them six mil pellets do the job I want. They sit on the bottom, they stay there till a the carp eats them, and they're not gonna get wafted about my peg, making the fish much, much easier to catch. Can do exactly the same thing, like I said, with baits like hemp and corn, they're gonna do the same job. They're gonna pin the fish to the bottom, but for me, the hard pellets are just a little bit more selective, and they're gonna target the fish that I'm wanting to catch. Now the other thing that I'm going to have, obviously, like I've just said, I've got my six mil pellets there for feeding. You can use whatever pellets you want at the fishery I'm at today. So I'm just using some nice six mil coppins pellets that don't break down and stay exactly where I want them. The other thing that I'm always going to have is some bigger baits for on the hook. Now a six mil pellet on the hook or on the hair rig is very good. An eight mil pellet also really good. A nice standout bait over the top of them, slightly smaller six mils. A cap can pick that out nice and easy, get me that nice positive bite I'm looking for. Another hook bait that I find really good can be two six mils in a band. Again, just the same as what I'm feeding, but just stands out a little bit better over the top. Now, the one reason people feed things like ground bait and them smaller particles is to draw fish into your peg. And the one disadvantage you've got with the bigger pellets is that they don't have quite the same attraction to draw the fish into your peg. If you feed them at the time of the day when the fish are naturally wanting to come in, then that's great. They're probably going to come in anyway and eat them. If I feel like I need to feed something to pull the fish in, they're taking a bit too long to want to come in and I need to force them into the edge, then I'll always have some micro pellets now these go a little bit against what i'm saying they're a bit lighter they can be wafted about my peg and i need to be really careful thinking about how i'm going to feed them so first up you can see i've not soaked them so that they've swelled right up and gone really soft and there's a good reason for that i want to be able to squeeze them into a nice firm solid ball if i give that two three four squeezes you can see it's rock hard it's going to go straight to the bottom it's always going to go down in a nice neat pile and I mean and I can put my hook bait straight on top of that but I've got all the attraction of them smaller particles to draw the fish in. Now the other thing with feeding micro pellets is I really if I can help it don't want to be feeding them every time I go in. So I can go in feed my hard pellets if after a few feeds the fish don't look like they're coming in I need to force them to come in I can then go and feed that ball of micros see if it drags the fish in. I might then get a few indications, catch one, I'll go back to the hard pellets again. Start feeding them again, try and get the fish to eat them. Now that they're coming in, I've fed the micros, drawn the fish in, put them back onto the harder, heavier baits. Obviously, if you're not getting bites, then you might have to feed another ball of micros again. And it's just a balancing act between feeding enough of them to draw the fish in, but not too many that you're causing yourself some problems in that deeper water where the pellets can stack it and wafted about and stuck in things and causing you all sorts of problems with liners and foul hookers. Now that's the bait, nice and simple, really easy, but you also need the right rig to fish with and the right tackle. So I'll just quickly run through the rig that I've been using today. And to be honest, it's the rig that I'm always going to use for this type of fishing. First up, elastic loads of choices of elastic out there personally i want something that's reasonably soft so when i hook a fish it can swim out of my peg but it can power up nicely with the use of the puller and by using the puller i can tighten that elastic up and net the fish quickly in a match fishing situation i obviously want to land them fairly fast get them in the net and increase my weight but i don't want to pull out of them and this fxt 16 to 18 hybrid is absolutely perfect it's the elastic i use for 95 percent of my margin fishing if I get a real strong arrival of fish and I need to catch them that little bit quicker, or maybe the fish are of a really, really big average size, I will step up my elastic a bit. I'll change to the white 18 to 20 FXT hollow. Little bit more power, a little bit more control over the fish. But like I say, for most of my margin carp fishing, 16 to 18 hybrid is the elastic I go for. Coming down onto mainline, now, no messing about with a main line. O21 FXT rig line. Really strong, really durable. It might get ran into a few snags. You get fish trying to drag you under an undercut bank. You don't want the main line breaking. Break off your full rig. And before you know it, you're having to set up again. Below that, nice standard slim bodied style float. This is a prototype one I've actually been testing but there's, it's always this type of float that I've used. Slim body, carbon stem, I don't want wire because again, fish run under the bank, it might bend. Most importantly, a nice thick two mil tip in that float. I'm gonna leave that full bristle showing 
and it just allows me to distinguish liners. I can watch all them movements on my floor and then wait for it to shoot under really, really fast. And I know that I'm not gonna miss a bite. It's gonna be on, it's hooked in the mouth. I'm not striking at liners and foul hooking them. Going down the line, really simple shotting. I've just got a spread bulk, maybe an inch apart on each shot of number nine shot. They shot that float, like I said, to the full bristle showing, meaning I can read bites, read liners, and hook all the fish. And then below that, I'm finished off with a hook length of 019 FXT rig line. Again, like I said, it's strong, it's durable. I don't want that to let me down. And finally, hook-wise, I've got to tie a hair rig, and I'd size 16 404 with a hair rigged bait band. Not too big, but that whole hook's shown. I don't feel the need for anything bigger. Obviously, I'm hair rigging them pellets. The whole hook's shown. Gives me perfect penetration to hook any fish. So really simple rigs, really simple baits, but they're all doing exactly what I want to do and meaning I can just make the most of my peg, keep my rig in the water, keep fishing, and try and pin them fish to the bottom where they're much easier to catch. One problem that you will always encounter in deep margins are liners, missed bites and a few foul hooks fish and some days you've just got to put up with it. Not a lot you can do other than fish through it, sit and wait and hopefully you get a proper bite. But there is days when it just becomes impossible to do that. You just get too many signs and you struggle to catch. You struggle to actually catch anything despite there being loads and loads of fish in your peg. Now one thing you can actually do to combat it, oh, and this is a perfect example, one thing you can do to combat it is come and fish much, much closer to yourself. And by doing that, it means you don't get quite as many fish in your peg, the fish don't come close to you, quite as confident. That's not the biggest margin carp in the world, but still a lovely fish again. Yeah, so the fish don't come in quite as confident. Well, that's nicely unhooked itself for me. They don't come in quite as confident, meaning you can leave your rig in the water for longer without getting all them silly indications and get a much more positive bite. And even though you're not getting as many fish actually come into your peg, you end up catching more because you become more efficient, make the fish much easier to catch. And just then was a perfect example. You've seen how quickly I caught that fish down the other side where I was a bit further away from myself, liners were becoming a real problem and those times I was maybe missing 10 bites without catching a fish. That time I did miss a little bit of a bite straight away, but then it went back in, settled and went straight under. And that's down to fishing that little bit closer to myself, being able to have the fish, not as many fish coming in, but the feeding on the bottom where I want to catch them. And I can just sit and wait for a nice positive bite and catch a fish nice and easy. See that, I had a bit of a liner, and because I'm sat almost right on top of my float fishing that close, really, really easy to read what's going on. So, oh, now I did miss that one. Like I said, you're still always gonna miss an odd bite. To start with, I'm not gonna feed again, I'll just go and drop it back in. You'll still miss an odd bite, but my rig's in the water and it's fishing a lot more. That actually looked like a positive bite. It maybe wasn't a liner. You're always gonna get an odd one that you miss out on. Some of them are crafty old big carp and they just get away with it. There's not a lot you can do about that. But by fishing this bit closer to myself, you can see again where I was getting plagued with liners earlier, my float's just sat there. Now the only thing I might find, I might not catch one, I've fed my bait, I maybe spook that carp out. And because I said there's not as many fish coming into the edge as there would be the other side, I might just find I have to feed again to get another one to come in nice and confident but I'm at least able to fish just how I want. I'm able to put my bait in, get my rigging on top of it, where before it was all a little bit of a mess the other side, missing loads and loads of bites. Now, even though I'm still gonna miss an odd bite, it's still deep, you've still got them fish coming in at all sorts of depths, but there's not quite as many there, and you feel a little bit more in control of what's actually going on. So you can see, the other side, when I fed my bait, I was getting liners as the bait was falling, there was that many there, they're coming off the bottom. That time you can see I fed my bait and my float's just sat there lovely and I can now sit and wait for a bite. And it's just a little bit more controlled, not quite the amount of chaos that I'm getting on the other side. And hopefully I'll now just sit and wait, might wait a minute or so, two minutes, however long it takes. But as long as I know I've got that pile of bait there, my rig's sat nice, I can wait for one to come in and eat it and hopefully catch it much, much easier. And 
there you go, same thing again. Took a little bit longer to get a bite than it is the other side, but lovely positive bite, float shot under, and because there's not as many fish there, I hooked it much, much easier. Not the biggest fish again, but much, much easier to catch. And every now and again, you'll still get them great big fish come in and catch them. But you're not foul looking fish, you're not missing loads of bites. It's making the fish much easier to catch. And there we go, a lovely little mirror. Perfect. Let's get in and catch a few more. Well, today at Tolleton Ponds has been absolutely brilliant. I've caught loads and loads of fish. This left hand line, throwing pellets in, fishing really short to myself, like I spoke about earlier, has been brilliant and by far the best on the day. But I hope along the way you've picked up a thing or two that's gonna help you next time you're tackling a peg with a deep margin. For now, that's gonna be it. But if you want to keep up to date with everything that's going on at Frenzy and hopefully pick up some more hints and tips from both me and the rest of the Frenzy team, then don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll see you again on the bank very soon. Mm -hmm.